It is only after the kingdom of God is established. That's when you can begin to talk of thy will be done. So a lot of times we must sit at the place of Lord thy kingdom come. It is God who knows when it is time to use you. Remember Isaiah was preaching you know, until the day he saw God. He said, woe is me. I am a man of unclean lips and I dwell among the people with unclean lips. That day, that realization that self is my problem. They use the coal, the tongues from the throne of God, touch his lips, he was sanctified. After that, what did he hear next? Who shall go for us? Whom shall we send? He says, send me. You, can't, you cannot be sent by God until his kingdom has come, until he's ruling over your life, until, until he's the only one in charge of your life. Every attempt by you to force God to send you somewhere is not going to work. Ephesians chapter 3. 14 to 19. For this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. May what? Dwell. What does it mean to dwell? To live. That it might take up residence. That ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. And to, to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge. That ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Without the self-life going, the fullness of God cannot be in you. And why is the fullness of God necessary? So that you can do the work of God. The only way the will of God, I think I've said this before some years ago, the only way a man can do the will of God is for God to do that will through that man. And for God to do his will through a man, that man must, must have been emptied of self so that God can come in there and do his work through that man. That's why Paul wrote and said, it is no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. And the life that I live now, I live by the faith of the Son of God who died for me. Where when they tell you to come and go and do this thing, the excitement for doing the things of men is no longer there. If you are doing the things of men at all, it is because you want to preach Christ to them. You are involved there. These things that we are talking about, it has a bearing on all men. It's not just people who go to church. What, I, what do I mean by that? It's not just people who, are, who say they are ministers of the gospel. No. Those of you who are working in the secular, you must take the kingdom with you into the secular. If the kingdom of God were in you in the secular, your practices will be according to the will of God. Men will know you by people who stand for what God stands for. The kingdom of God cannot come into your life, for example, and you are engaging yourself in prostitution. You know, it's not, it's not possible. The kingdom of God cannot come into your life and you are committing, you are, you are, you are giving bribes and taking bribes. It's not possible. The kingdom of God cannot come into your life and there are files on your desk that you need to attend to. But you are busy talking shop and abandoning files that depend on people's lives. The kingdom of God cannot be in your life. You are a governor or a leader of men. And you have pensioners in your state whose, whose pensions you have not paid for three years. 
but you go to church to say you are giving thanksgiving. You are a hypocrite. By any yard of imagination. The kingdom of God in the life of a man is the throne room of God in that man's life. Remember what Abraham said when God told him he was going to Sodom and Gomorrah to destroy the city. He said, shall the judge of the whole world not do right? If the judge of the whole world set up his throne room in your heart, shall you not do right? Shall you judge partially? Shall you not be impartial in your judgment? Should you be ethnic? Should you be nationalistic? Should you not be focused on what that God is saying to you? If indeed his throne were established in your life. Thy kingdom come is a critical part of our prayer every day. Because without it, we can't do the work of God. Do you know that in terms of prayer, I think we're going to discuss that, I don't know, maybe two, three weeks further down. That all the anointing that you ever need for today was given to you this morning when you prayed. If you didn't pray, you didn't have it. Do you understand that? And it was used up today. Tomorrow, you need to go back. You remember? In the wilderness, manna fell every day. Is that not so? And they needed to take a portion for that day. When they tried to carry manna over to the next day, which was not a Sabbath day, what happened to the manna? It stank. Worms were coming out of it. A carryover anointing is a stinking savor. It's hurtful and dangerous. That's why we pray it every day. In chapter 4 of Ephesians, I read from verse 11, when the kingdom of God is in you, you will be able to do the work of God. And chapter, verse 11 says, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men, and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love, may grow up unto him in all things which is the head, even Christ, from, when, from whom, rather, the whole body fitly joined together, and compassed, compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. What all this is saying, simply put, is this. When Christ is formed in your heart, when the kingdom of God is established in your heart, and you begin to minister, you are going to minister to bring men to the full knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are going to work hard to make sure that lies and falsehood and strange doctrines are uprooted from the body of Christ. You are going to ensure that the body of Christ is working together in love. You cannot have the kingdom of God established in your heart and you are trumping your church. What you trump is the kingdom of God. The each church is just like a, a vehicle. But the destination is the same. So some of the competition that we see among churches is a manifestation that the kingdom of God is yet to come in the lives of those men. Look at verse 17. It says, This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk. How do Gentiles walk? Competition. In the vanity of their mind, they do as they like. Whatever pleases them. Verse 18. Having the, understanding, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. This is how unbelievers walk. We shouldn't be blind in our hearts. Hating other Christians, even hating Muslims, hating other people. Why? Is that the kingdom of God? Definitely not. 
Did God not create all men? The difference is that you are a child, they are created beings. And he never asked you to kill a created being. Or slander. In verse 19, who, being past feeling, these are Gentiles, have given themselves over unto lasciviousness. I saw some women today when I went out, coming from church, and I was shaking my head. I said, ah, what is going on? Are they, go, did they, are they coming from a nightclub or what? They were carrying Bibles. Behaving like the Gentiles behave. To walk all on cleanness with greediness. Exposing themselves to men. Men revealing themselves to women. Verse 20. But ye have not so learned Christ. Have you been taught Christ? After you became born again, were you learned, were you taught Christ? Or were you taught how to become a rich man? If so be that you have heard him, have you heard Christ? And have been taught by him, have you been taught by him? As the truth is in Jesus. Have you been taught by him? That he put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. Which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that ye put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. And I ask the question, have we been so changed? Has the word of God really dwelt richly in our hearts? Have we learned Christ to put off the old man? Look at chapter 5. I'm reading just portions. When you get home, I want you to read the whole of Ephesians so that you can read it in context. In verse 17 of chapter 5, it says, Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what, what, the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess or dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. All the time. Let's just read the rest. When the kingdom of God is formed in you, you are going to be able to live as God wants you to live by the power of the Spirit of God. There's nobody who is a Christian who lives by his power. If the power of the Spirit of God is not working in your life, you cannot live the life of a Christian. The life of a Christian is not lived by himself. 